Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, today we can see learning Python and today I will show you how to build that pie chart in Matplotlib Python and Binance IP to track your crypto portfolio. So let's start. Once again, today we'll talk about that chart and mm, yeah, let's just start. So once again, we'll use Binance API and we'll use Matplotlib, we'll use Python and we'll use our brains to do that. So those are four things that we'll need. And of course, um, you need your computer with PyCharm. So yeah, I'm using PyCharm. Lots, lots of people asked what my ID is. So that is right here, PyCharm version um, of 2018. Okay, so let's just start. First of all, what we wanna do is install all of the libraries that we need. So I'm gonna open up my terminal and write pip install. And I think Python dash Binance. I'm not pretty sure, but yeah, Python dash Binance. That is the library, uh, so you can get your exchange rates and all the data from Binance. And then all you need to do is install matplotlib as well, because matplotlib is the Graphene library in Python. So we'll use it to really build the chart itself. And what we are going to do now is import from Binance. We are going to import client. So if you work in a synchronous environment, and uh, I will not explain asyncio, asynchronous programming in that video, but you have a sync client, which works with asynchronous, asynchronous functions, asynchronous coroutines and all that stuff. But today we'll just use, and you can use it if you want, but today we'll use client. And um, that class, that object just really works with a simple Python code. So no asynchronous things, no nothing. And what we are going to do now is simply create that client. So Binance client. Binance client equals client. And now I'm going to create get, get exchange rate or get, I think it's better to call that function get ticker price because we will not have any exchange rate or will we? Oh, I don't know. So what that function will do? We we'll write a function that will get our exchange rates, for example, for BTC USDT pairs from Binance and we'll return the result. And um, to do that, what we need to do is of course, get the symbol that we're gonna request from Binance. So it's gonna be symbol, or sorry, symbol parameter in our function. And um, once again, get ticker price will return the value of that specific coin on that exchange or that specific coin pair on that exchange. And symbol is that coin pair, for example, BTC, USDT, Ethereum, Bitcoin, or anything else. And um, to do that, what we can use is Binance client get ticker. So as you saw it, there are lots of functions in Binance API. And if you want me to continue um, elaborating that topic, then just write it down in the comments. But get ticker function is the function that we'll use in order to get our get our exchange rates. But get ticker function does not only return exchange rates. So let me just use ticker data variable here. And as you can see, I'm using symbol as the symbol that our client provided as the parameter to our function. But when I'll print my ticker data, and let me just quickly call that get ticker data for BTC USDT, for example, when I'll call it, as you can see, there, are, there is much more data than we need. And um, what I'll use from that chunk of information is I think previous close, not, not previous close price, but last price. So as you can see, there is lots of data like close time, first ID, last ID of different trades, price change, symbol itself, price change percent. But I'll just use, I'll just use, I'll just use what? Last price. Yeah. So in order to get that last price, what we can use is last price here. But I want to just pause for a little bit. And if we pause, we can see that those are not really flaws. Those are not really numbers because Binance API has a very unique or a very interesting feature. So lots of values, I will say every value that is somehow related to the price, to the quantity is uh, given to you in strings. So as you can see, price change is a string. Last price is a string. Ask quantity is a string. Open price is a string. So everything is a string. And uh, because of that, what we are going to do is not just simply return return the ticker price here or ticker or last price here. But what we're gonna do aside from that is 
convert that value to float. So now if I'll just print get ticker price from BTC USDT and I'll just run my code, as you can see, we receive a normal float value. We can check that with type function, but um, I'm pretty sure everybody, oh, sorry, I'm pretty sure everyone trusts me, but if you don't, then just look at print type. Yeah, I forgot one, one parenthesis and yeah, let me just, yeah. Now that's better, okay, class float. I couldn't see my keyboard, so that's why I was like hesitant, but um, that's why I hesitated. But yeah, as you can see now, class float, everything is all right, so we can move on. What I wanna say, or what I wanna do now is use BTC exchange or BTC exchange rate. Yeah, exchange rate mm, variable. And also let me just put some more mm, pairs so we can really build a pie chart because with one, only with only one like BTC exchange rate, we cannot build any pie chart because once again, pie chart is a circle. So we have a circle and we, mm, we split that circle in different parts into different parts. So for example, we will have something like that. I think everybody knows about pie charts, but for some people who may not know about those, we will have BTC on that side, for example, Ethereum on that side and uh, something like Litecoin on that side. And those different parts are, mm. are calculated using their weight, if I can say it like that, using their value. So using the quantity that uh, all of those values give to the pie chart. So the whole pie chart is 100% and each value is is a part of that 100%. And because of that, we yeah, we can really see how much of, um, of a specific coin we have in our portfolio. So that's why we're gonna build that chart today. And of course, let me just once again add some other coi um, coins. So as I said, Ethereum and Litecoin. Here, what I need to do is use Ethereum USDT and here, Litecoin USDT. And now let me just print all of those exchange rates. So BTC exchange rate, Ethereum exchange rate, Litecoin exchange rate. Let me run my program. So as you can see it right now, there is a, a little bit of delay because our program requests three, three separate requests. And if you want to make it quicker or if you want to make it like continuous so we only request those uh, exchange rate once but if you want to make your program request those exchange rates every second every two seconds then you probably need to work with asynchronous client from Binance Viber because it would be much better and asynchronous programming there is a lot about that so I have a separate video on that topic if you're interested you can watch it after that video but yeah our program is relatively slow in that part because we create or we make three separate requests and every request waits, uh, waits for each other. So yeah, that's why we have a little bit of delay, but that's not on us, that's on the network conditions. Okay, so what we have here, mm, Bitcoin exchange rate is all right, that's all right, and that's I think all right, I don't know, I don't watch Litecoin, but don't watch after Litecoin, but whatever, I think it's all right. So now what we did, we requested three different coins and uh, we requested their exchange rate to USDT. And what we're gonna do now is mock our mock our balance. So imagine that I have BTC amount, I have something like 0 0.5 Bitcoin, Ethereum amount, I have like five or five Ethereum and also I have Litecoin amount, uh, maybe like mm, 50 Litecoin because it's the smallest, Litecoin has the smallest value of those three. So imagine that that is my balance. Of course, you can get your balance from Binance. Um, I think you can, I will leave a link to Binance documentation down below so you can check it out if you want. But there is, I think, a function called get account. I'm not really sure, but yeah, I think it's get account and then you can get your, get specific symbols. So get specific values for your account. So how much Bitcoin, Ethereum or any other coin you really have in your account because right now those are mock values. And um, now what we're gonna do is use BTC. Uh, we will create a separate variable, BTC USDT amount. And what it's gonna do is simply BTC exchange rate multiplied by BTC amount. And we're gonna do that three times. So Ethereum USD amount, 
here Ethereum exchange rate and here Ethereum amount. Here Litecoin, yeah, I can just simply change B to L and Litecoin use the amount. And now what we are gonna have in those three values is the real value in US dollars for our coins. So we'll have BTC, so how, how much or how many dollars we have for that coin, for, for BTC, for Bitcoin, how many dollars we have for Ethereum and how many dollars we have for Litecoin. And um, what we need to do right now is simply put those values to our pie chart. In order to do that, I'm gonna import matplotlib dot pyplot as plot. So matplotlib once again is a graphing library in Python. And uh, what we're gonna do now is just simply use plot dot pi and uh, we're gonna put an array of those three values. So BTC USD amount, Ethereum USD amount and Litecoin USD amount. And after that, what we need to do is use plot.show in order to show that graph to, to us. So in order to see that graph. And yeah, as you can see right now, we have that graph right here. But there is a problem. I cannot see any labels. I cannot see any values for my for different parts of my data. And that is why we need to use labels. So now we just provided the values, but also we have labels. So labels, and we can simply provide the array of labels. In our case, those will be BTC, Ethereum, LTC. Let's run it once again. And I think now we will see our graph a little bit better. Yeah, because as you can see right now, we have white or Bitcoin, Ethereum and Litecoin labels for different parts of our chart. So BTC is like 50%, Ethereum is like 40, not 40, but like 30% and Litecoin is um, 20, 15 percent, something like that. So as you can see right now, we have our values for our chart. That is very, very great. But what I want to do next is add a legend. So legend is like mm, legend is like the title for your graph. I will just show it to you. Plot dot legend, and we can provide title here. Title here. I th I think everybody knows what a legend is. For example, my port portfolio or just my portfolio because we'll change it later. So now if I run my program once again, you will see that now we have my portfolio here. So that is the legend for our graph. But what I want to do with the legend is I want to show the total value for our um, account. So total value or total amount as we named every variable amount is going to be BTC USD amount plus Ethereum USD amount plus LTC USD amount. And what we're going to do in legend is um, total amount and I'm gonna use an F string so total amount is total amount. Let's run our program once again and we will see that now once again I provided the data the title and as you can see our total amount is sixty eight thousand dollars and some leftovers. Okay and uh, you can put that here as well so we just put Ethereum amount, USD amount and Litecoin amount. So I think that's all I have for today. So that is a simple graph for your crypto portfolio. Mm, write it down in the comments if you want me to make some more videos on that topic. And uh, I think that's it. So thank you for the watching and good luck.